Now, celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville, a local show with a spotlight on the 904 with hosts Eden Candle and Mark Payton, featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Another River City road trip. Welcome to River City Live. Today we're at the Greenside Community in World Golf Village in St. Augustine. I'll tell you, every time we come out here to St. Augustine, I feel like I'm on vacation. Even though it's only 15, 20 minutes away from most people, there's so much out the door and throughout the show, we're really going to put the spotlight on this area. Oh yeah, we're going to go take you out on the water for some red boat tours. And of course, I'm going to take you somewhere to eat. We're going to the St. Augustine Seafood Company. But we needed a home base and that's why we're in this beautiful model home from Dream Finders here in the Greenside neighborhood. And we'll give you a tour of this home in just a little while, but just like right off the top of your head, what what's your favorite thing so far? Because I have one myself. In, in this, this area? In this home. No, oh, in, in this, this home, home that we're sitting in. The bathroom. Whenever we walk <laughs> into yes, your model home, we go shower. to the bathroom Check and it actually out. it won an award. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna look at that, Rance. Oh, I'm with Mark. That shower. Oh, in the shower. We, we can we shower do. together. <laughs> you know, my okay. Okay. not so much. Well, I just but really, it's a big shower. I like the open plan and that that it's really bright in here. But there's like this other little offshoot room. You know what? It doesn't really do us a lot of good to tell you. We're gonna show you later. Why don't we show you something now, and then we'll get a tour going in a little while, and we'll meet uh, a representative from Dream Finders Home. Can't start anything out without a good cup of coffee. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, all right, so uh, our producer Abigail took us over to Kookaburra Cafe. My partner and I decided uh, back in 2012 that we wanted to uh, move forward with the concept that we'd been working on informally for quite a while. We came down to visit Spencer's uncle, fell in love with the city, and felt there was a, a genuine need for the for a, a good coffee shop uh, in town. Came upon our spot here at 24 Cathedral and just thought it would be a great way for us to kind of break into the market. It was small enough for us to work by ourselves, which we did for about a year. Um, and the concept kind of grew uh, from there. I'm a uh, dual citizen, I'm an Aussie American. My mother is Australian, my father was American. Um, so I kind of grew up going back and forth. The coffee culture in Australia is very robust and very uh, developed. Particularly the espresso culture in Australia is far beyond what it was in the US and they've got a great cafe culture. So we felt like it was a good way for us to kind of differentiate ourselves for any international tourists that were coming through, um, it's a way to kind of signal that we have great coffee. And then the Aussie Pies was just a fun offering for us. The Aussie Pies are kind of near and dear to my heart. I have a lot of uh, fond memories as a child of enjoying those. One of the reasons we've been embraced is because we are taking a bit of an atypical approach to third wave coffee um, in that we are using really high quality beans. Um, we use, currently use Bold Bean out of Jacksonville, who's, who we've used since we started. Um, we're actually slowly beginning to roast our own beans into the mix, but they've been fantastic and they have a great product. So we've been using them, preparing coffee in a third wave um, manner, doing pour overs, doing excellent espresso, um, making sure that our lattes and flat whites are, are spot on. But what we do to make us a bit different is we make a few of our own syrups. We have a lot of fun with drinks and we try to make it an environment where people can come in and get kind of anything. So we do drip coffee, we do Chemex, we do awesome espresso, we do funky lattes with different syrups. We use uh, Wainwright Dairy out of Live Oak, Florida, which is by far the best dairy that you can get in this area. We make all of our baked goods fresh every day at our 312 location, including all the pies. They're all family recipes. So we're really just trying to give people 
the most fresh, unique experience that they can get. We want each and every customer who leaves our establishment to be, you know, impressed with their overall experience, and we want them to leave in a happier place uh, than when they first came in. A great first stop for this River City road trip. Do you agree? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Got to start out with some cafe. Yes, got to get that lift. <laughs> Absolutely, and we are, as we said earlier, at our home base on this St. Augustine River City road trip. And Julie Carter is with Dream Finders Homes, and we're inside one of your gorgeous model homes. Where are we specifically? We know where we are. Let's tell everybody. Else. We are at Royal Golf Village, just off of I-95 International Golf Parkway, and we are in a wonderful neighborhood that's fully established, but guess what? You can have a new home in an established area, low fees. Our pricing here starts in the upper 200s and goes all the way to 500, but we have lots of options for our buyers. And I like the way you describe that, fully established, because a lot of times when you see a new house, it's out in the middle of no yeah. place. <laughs> so you got a new house, new features, but no there's neighbors. nothing out your door. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to wait for the neighbors to move in. They're all around. This is a very active area. You can ride your bike to the IMAX theater. There's golf out your back door. There's a ton of activities to do. And our amenities within five minutes of here. And it doesn't feel like it, but it's pretty close to 95. So you, you don't see it or anything, but you can get to Jacksonville pretty quickly. Oh, absolutely. We're five minutes away from a wonderful stoplight to hop onto the interstate and be downtown in less than 30 minutes. I like that it's uh, the homes are like smaller community, so you're not getting lost and with trying to meet your neighbors and all the kids are like, hey, we're right here. Absolutely. This particular neighborhood only has 36 home sites and our other neighborhood that's just being launched called The Cottages is right around the corner and it only has about 50 home sites. And when it comes to potential buyers, there's a huge selection of what you guys have to offer. Correct? Absolutely. We will personalize it to you and we have homes starting at 1,600 square feet all the way up to over 4,000. Well, so, so it's not like everything is just looks the same. I can make it my own. Absolutely. That's what we specialize in. I like it. So Mark, those, big, like it. those big showers are going to be in every corner of the house, right? Yeah, yeah. the dream home, they're dream finders. That's, that, that makes perfect sense. It makes sense, sense now. <laughs> I, I get sense. it. So I know we're, we're taking a tour here very mm -hmm. shortly, but um, what are just some of the features that DreamFinders Homes finds to be kind of like their specialty? Well, I would say that, you know, as a customer, whether you've built your first house or it's your fifth house, we can always find that little something that you didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Like, personally, I love the pull-out trash can. That is the must-have for me, <laughs> personally. You have to show me that. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter your price point. You can get those little touches that are in a custom home. Love it. I'm ready for a tour. I've already taken a little mini tour. Is that all right? <laughs> I noticed you were in the bathroom laying down. Well, now we'll take we'll, we'll take some notes. <laughs> Doing little little bathroom angels oh, or something. Just like fluttering. <laughs> no, There's no, no video no. of that though. <laughs> We could find right. some. <laughs> well, we do have that tour coming up on this River City road trip. We'll be right back. Welcome back to River City Live on this River City road trip. And today we're in St. Augustine. I'm with Chuck and right behind me, you will see the lighthouse. And like many people that live around the area, you might've seen it, but you haven't been on top of it. And this place has such a rich history and there's so much to do here. Chuck, can you start out with the history of the grounds here? Well, there's great, just like anywhere in St. Augustine, we have a lot of great history here at the lighthouse. Uh, we know that there was a tower here that the Spanish set up as a watchtower and an aid to navigation as early as the 1500s because Sir Francis Drake raided and burned it to the ground in 1586. 
Uh, then, after another series of those wooden watchtowers, they built a lighthouse out of coquina stone, a bit more permanent, probably in the 1730s. And that one lasted all the way up until our current tower was completed. Uh, and basically, that one was about to be uh, about to fall into the sea. You know, the the the, uh, the beach was eroding. Same kind of problems a lot of oceanfront property uh, folks have uh, today. And so, the current tower was started in 1871, completed in 1874, and it has been an active aid to navigation ever since. It's amazing, and again, such a rich history. And what a lot of people don't know, myself included, the grounds actually to walk around here. There's more to explore than just walking up the lighthouse. Oh, this is a great uh, place. I mean, we have uh, wonderful nature trails in our kind of Florida maritime hammock, a little gym of undeveloped uh, property here, the kind of the real Florida. Uh, we've got historic buildings. We've got our World War II Coast Guard barracks. We've got our uh, World War II period garage. They used to maintain Jeeps there. Uh, we've just finished our brand new building, so we've got great exhibits. Uh, we have a great shipwreck archaeology exhibit, uh, the wrecked exhibit about a 1782 shipwreck that went down right off St. Augustine here. You can see all kinds of artifacts from cannons to the ship's bell. Uh, here in this new building, we have the Legends of the Light exhibit and a lot of ship models and a lot of information about the keepers who lived here. And then we have, of course, our archaeology laboratories where uh, you can see conservators working on shipwreck artifacts here in, our, uh, in, in this new laboratory in the new building. So lots of great stuff. That's amazing. And with the new laboratory, how exactly does that work? So people, when they find things, they literally just come right in here? Well, we have an active archaeology research program. You know, we're a Smithsonian affiliate, so we take our research and our history very seriously here. And that's what I do. I'm the head of the archaeology program. So we, every summer, we're out diving on shipwrecks that go back to the 1800s to the 1700s, even earlier. And so we have, uh, you know, you can't just bring these things up from the sea and expect them uh, to last. You know, you can't just stick them on the shelf for people to see. They have to go through a pretty serious cleaning and stabilization uh, process. So sometimes there's electrical cleaning, there's chemical cleaning. So we We've got uh, a pretty scientific lab here, and folks who are here visiting the, uh, the lighthouse can go right in. We have an observation room, so they can walk inside the door, and they have a nice room with glass panels, and they can look out and see the archaeologists at work on these shipwreck artifacts. That is amazing. Chuck, you have one of the coolest jobs ever. <laughs> so right now, I'm going to meet up with Tanya. We're going to talk about the ghost tours that happen all year round, and for the first time ever, I'm going to walk up the lighthouse up there. How many steps? 219 steps, 165 feet high. Wow. Wish me luck. Thanks, Chuck. To 17, to 18, maximum effort, 219. Ah, I made it. All right, so we just had a great overview with Chuck on the history of this place. Now we're going to talk about the ghost tours with Tanya. The ghost tours, what we call dark of the moon tours, are the only tours that get you into the tower at night. Uh, we run them on the weekends right now and um, around 7.30, but definitely check our website for times. And they're pretty exciting because obviously you get a great view of downtown and the water uh, in the evenings, but also um, we have some pretty crazy stories that happen here. One of the most popular is of our uh, pity girls where um, they can either be sh uh, tying your shoelaces together, <laughs> which obviously climbing the tower might not be ideal. Um, or just hearing them giggle down the tower stairs or even hearing little girls' voices saying hello to you. So uh, definitely some fun stories. So Tanya, if you're afraid of heights and have a uh, healthy fear of ghosts, I don't know, maybe sit this one out? Um, maybe, but I, don't, I definitely recommend coming and trying it out because it might be worth it in the end. And definitely this view. I mean, if you look around, it's amazing. Today we have perfect visibility and you could see everything. Tanya, if people want more information on the lighthouse, what's the best resource? Definitely check our website, www.staugustinelighthouse.org. Or we also are on Twitter, at First Lighthouse, uh, on Instagram, and on Facebook, of course. Well, thank you for your time. Do you want to race down? Let's do it. <laughs> I need about, oh, a good 20 minutes or so, maybe a Gatorade before I do that. So, can I get a head start? Uh, maybe five seconds. Okay. All right. <laughs> While Mark makes his way down those lighthouse steps, I'm going to take you out onto the water for Red Boat Water Tours. We consider our company to be the most family friendly choice that people have in town. In fact, we had some people this morning that said they were with us because nobody else would accept their children under three. Three, yeah. So we let them come. We like to have them here. Here, 
is on Captain Tony's and his first mate slash wife's Red Boat Water Tours. This two-person team needed the universe to push them into launching this business. Red Boat Water Tours just began as a... It was almost an accident. Yeah, an accident. A good, a good accident. An accident, really. Yeah. I lost my job. We were living in Chicago. I lost my job. We came down here because we had wanted to move here for years. Finally ended up here. I saw a guy looking for a captain. Um, I went to work for him for a little while and Jennifer came to work with me. We thought we were going to buy his company and that didn't work out. So we just did our own thing. Hailing from Chicago, I had to wonder, um, Captain Boating experience? Have any? Yeah. You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been boating my whole life since I was probably five years old and just never formalized it. Came down here and decided to get my captain's license. In fact, one of my daughters and I went to captain's school together <laughs> and she just, in fact, this morning got her final credentials in the mail. So she's a, a licensed Coast Guard master captain. She's 19 years old. Nice. Being relatively new transplants to the area, they picked up lots of information to keep tour goers interested. Oh, we still have a lot to learn. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We have a lot to learn. We, uh, I don't know, you know, we took some tours. We did a lot of reading, studied up. Um, I don't know, it's just... You hear a lot from your passengers too that can educate you. Yeah, and then we make stuff up. Yeah, well, we don't. <laughs> The company offers a variety of touring programs. We offer a Dolphin Odyssey tour. That's probably one of our most popular. And that's about an hour and a half tour. Where we leave, we stay right in the intercoastal area, look for any of the dolphins. And if, if we don't find a whole lot of them, I should say, we'll go downtown and do some of that activity as well. Talk about the sites and some of the history of the city. And we, all, we do a nighttime tour. We call it the Sunset Tour, and it is a BYOB. It's also family friendly, but people usually don't bring children under the age of 18 on that trip. And we, we like to go out and see the sunset and look for any kind of wildlife during the first part of that tour as well. And the tours can be molded to fit the crowd. We try to, to, to cater each of our tours based on the type of people that are on the boat. We do a lot of private parties and we'll do a lot of things like that. So some of the parties are more, um, what would you say, family friendly parties and we also have you know. Oh yeah, some like bachelor parties. Bachelor parties. parties and bachelor parties. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do a lot of that as well. But Jennifer and I both have spent our careers in in jobs that were sales, marketing, um, places where we had to satisfy customers and take care of customers. So we've learned a lot about what it takes to make people happy. And, customer service. Yeah, and we decided when we started this business that that was what we were going to focus on. They love being their own bosses, but one of their biggest rewards? It's great big hugs. Yeah. When, they, when they get off the boat and give me a great big hug and say, say they had a great time, that's, that just makes my day. I'm Rance Adams, hugging it out for River City Live. Mark, I'm telling you, that is something your whole family will enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely want to check that place out. There's so much to do here. Now, one of the things that I did, again, the whole family would like. I didn't go on top of the water. I went in the water at the St. Augustine Aquarium. Let's take a look. The St. Augustine Aquarium is an exciting new Northeast Florida marine attraction. The first phase consists of an 80,000 gallon snorkel adventure, an interactive shark and stingray cove, and much more. I met up with the founders, Sean and Kathy Heister, to learn all about it. All the animals that we have at the St. Augustine Aquarium are Florida species. Um, we do have no mammals, um, but we are uh, conservation through education, so we want to help uh, educate everybody that if they're swimming off the coast and something bumps their foot, some of the things that are here might be what you have bumped your foot. And when you talk about education, a lot of your staff here, they really are experts and they know what they're talking about. Yes, um, one of the things we do that's unique is we have marine biologists stationed at all the habitats. And we put on educational presentations throughout the day so that there's plenty of learn as well as touch and feed and see. And Kathy, how did you get into this, you and your husband? I know Sean is an avid diver. Yes, you absolutely. Know. So how did this happen? Well, both my husband and I separately in college were a marine biology uh, focused, but we were told back in the day that it's a bad career, there's no jobs, there's no money, do something else. And so we did um, until uh, then, uh, 
when our children were grown and out of the house, we decided we wanted to take on a project with some passion. And so Sean went diving and would see how many um, sharks were depleting in the ocean, how the coral reefs were being affected. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we could bring it to land so everybody could learn about it? So that's really what birthed it. This is our 80,000 gallon snorkel adventure. In it, we have over 300 fish of 26 different species. It's designed to recreate what you'd see on a Florida reef or Caribbean reef. Uh, we've also got some rays in there and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. And the fish are, they'll get up close and personal with you. So it's, it, all the folks that have done it have said what a joy it was to be that close to the animals. And what type of fish are in there? Uh, we've got queen angel fish, we've got uh, uh, hogfish, pork fish, uh, and 20 other different species. So, and the rays are what are called cow nose rays. And when you were creating this aquarium, what gave you the idea, or the need, if you will, to have this type of interaction with fish? Well, it was, having been a diver all my life, it was something that I enjoyed so much and thought other people really need to share that experience. And this gives us the opportunity to let them at least, while not scuba diving, at least see what the underwater water world is all about. And if you want to get close and personal with the fish without being fully submerged, there's another fun option, the interactive shark and stingray cove. The exhibit allows you to feed the animals and the knowledgeable staff teaches you fascinating facts about the fish. The St. Augustine Aquarium is the perfect destination for anyone that wants to learn more about life under the sea. But before I head back to the studio, I want to take another dip in the tank. Such a great time, and I loved snorkeling, because you want to be with the fish, just not with any sharks, and that's how you do it. Yeah, me, sharks, no joy. But that's <laughs> another great family event, so I'm going to take the little diva sometime. Thanks for that information, Mark. You got it. We have more great information coming up on this area. Stick around. More to come right after this. Now, celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville, a local show with a spotlight on the 904 with hosts Eden Candle and Mark Payton, featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. We're back with Julie Carter of Dream Finders Homes, and we're in the Greenside neighborhood in World Golf Village. Julie, this is a model home, but many of your homes resemble this, and many are very different from this because you're a custom builder, correct? Absolutely. This particular home is called our Boca 2, and if you take a peek at it here and then you go to another neighborhood, it'll have a totally different feel. What are some of your favorite points about this specific home? I know the guys were really intrigued by that bathroom. Can we talk about that for a minute? Absolutely. That is a gorgeous master bath. It has a huge walk-in shower with a shower, rain shower head, which people absolutely love today. And it actually won our Parade of Homes ribbon for being the best feature of this house. It has a really pretty marble shower look. And we also have a beautiful, beautiful gourmet kitchen with stack cabinetry that highlights the cottage feel of this home. And kitchens, I mean, kitchens can make or break whether somebody really loves and feels comfortable in their home. What are some of the different things that you can do with kitchens? We can do anything that you can think of with a kitchen. We can do the stack cabinetry. We can do the 42 inch cabinets. We can do dark light. We can mix and match. It's really up to you as the customer of what your feel for your house is. The heart of the home is the kitchen and that's where people really spend a lot of time. So it's very important to take the time and think about what is the feel of my home. And sometimes people have to work from their home and that's why it's nice when you can incorporate a home office. 
Yes, this particular home has a really nice office slash study, I guess you would call it in the old days. And it is located at the very front of the home, whereas the family room is at the very back. So you have lots of space for you to not hear the mm -hmm. children playing in the other room or whatever may be happening. Speaking of getting away from the children, let's talk about that master. The master has a really nice big bay window on the back to enjoy the backyard views and it's um, oversized with some really pretty shiplap walls as, a, as an accent. And we were pleasantly surprised when we went up the stairs. There is not just another bedroom, but this in huge bonus room. Is that considered a bonus room or not? Just another bedroom? That would be considered a bedroom, but most people will use it as a bonus area. One of the nice features of that is the hardwood floors. A lot of folks don't think about, instead of doing just your typical carpet, it does offer the hardwood floors. Which is really nice for keeping things just kind of, um, you know, th that clean feeling, That, but it's still very homey. And you're close to 95, which is great, and you're close to shopping and the World Golf Village, right? Yes, we are. Five minutes and you can be on the interstate, five minutes to shopping, and guess what? You're five minutes to golf. Golf. <laughs> Where can folks go for more information? Go to our website, dreamfindershomes.com. Thanks for having us, Julie. It's so beautiful inside this home, but don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Once again, that's dreamfindershomes.com. Step into a model home at Greenside at World Golf Village. You won't find any food in the fridge, but you will find some great meals at St. Augustine Seafood Company. The Colonial Quarter property, which we're sitting in, is a two and a half acre property. It's a historic property owned by the state of Florida. So, as part of this property, we have a history, living history tour museum right behind us. And through that tour, we, we tell three centuries of St. Augustine history. And when we were looking for a concept, a restaurant concept that fits St. George Street, we thought an American concept rooted in the history of St. Augustine and the rich fishing legacy of America's uh, oldest port made perfect sense. When St. Augustine Seafood Company partner Jeff Sword mentions the Living History Tour, he's talking about the Pirate Museum that he and his partners moved here from Key West. More on that another time. Right now, this restaurant and bar, though, epic. We, we have two historic buildings here, the Florentia House and the Trii House, with great outdoor space as well. And So we had a great canvas to work with, with bringing the space to life. And through the St. Augustine Seafood Company, we wanted to tell the history of fishing in St. Augustine. And so in doing that, we partnered with the St. Augustine uh, Lighthouse and Maritime Museum um, over on the island. And they loaned us a bunch of artifacts and, and, and fo old photos that you'll see featured on the wall. They also worked with local photographers like Sean Kelly Conway to curate pictures to commemorate the fishing history of St. Augustine. With that in mind, they were able to do a lot with their two buildings and the open music space behind them to entice tourists, but also locals, to make this one of the hottest spots on St. George Street. You walk in through the Grape Arbor, uh, which is a great space in and of itself, and you have the two buildings on each side. So you make a right and come in this dining room. This is a fast casual counter service. Walk up to the counter, see the menu board, order. Classic seafood joint. You can make a left and go into the bar lounge. Has a different feel in there, different vibe, a little more um, uh, darker, uh, more comfortable, a little more laid back. But over there, it's full service. So you can sit down, and our bartenders will take care of you, we'll come up to you, give you traditional table service, and you can order and stay as long as you want. The food fits that St. Augustine vibe. You know, it just features the um, the uh, native. Uh, seafood of, uh, off the American waters. Uh, if we source all responsibly, locally caught uh, uh, fish. Um, and 
and uh, you know that they're time-honored seafood classics with some kind of modern twists on it. And you know exactly where your fish is coming from. It's really cool because we have uh, traceability down to the, the fishermen, the boats that are coming off of daily. Um, so yeah, every day we have you know the boat that the fish and the shrimp are coming off of. Um, we have the traceability of our oysters too. We know today they're coming from Cabano Bay, Texas. The moment you've all been waiting for, get your drool bibs ready. Over here we have our uh, wonderful Mayport shrimp that features East Coast white shrimp. Um, we, you know, we get in shrimp all the time, but it's all domestic. Uh, there will never be, you know, foreign shrimp, farm-raised shrimp, always fresh, always local from the coast of the southeastern United States. Over here is our, uh, our chowder fries, um, just basic fried red skin potatoes smothered with New England clam chowder. Um, bacon, chopped bacon. Right here we have the uh, citrus salad, uh, the Florida citrus salad. Over here we have our, uh, our anchor burger. It's a ground chuck patty, grilled. It's topped with pepper jack cheese, fried local Mayport shrimp. Yes, please. I'm Rance Adams for River City Live. Yes, I am drooling. I'm ready to eat some more. If you want to know more information, go to RiverCityLiveTV.com. Now we're about to take you to one of the oldest attractions in St. Augustine, the Alligator Farm. In Your Backyard, brought to you by DreamFinders Homes. Homes built to fit your lifestyle. here at the alligator farm down here in St. Augustine and joining us is John you are the director yes sir what tell people about the alligator farm because a lot of people might have heard about it but they don't really know what you guys are doing down well, especially here. the fact too the zoological part of it right sure it's an actual zoo so it's not just alligators and crocodiles you see so much more yeah well that's a trick is uh, people see the name alligator farm and they think oh I've been to one of those pits they're kind of dirty and smelly and and whatever and the truth is we're not a farm it's a horrible name for us <laughs> uh, we don't make belts and wallets and purses out of all our guys we're actually an accredited zoo with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and uh, that makes us part of an elite group there's about 200 zoos in North America that are part of that that club and uh, yeah we do more than crocodilians although uh, we're the only zoo in the whole world where you can come see every species that exists in the wild. Wait, every species? How many species are there? So there's 24 kinds of alligators, crocodiles, caiman, and gharial that all make up that word crocodilians. That is amazing. Wow. And then when we talk about the grounds, it really is, it's beautiful just to walk around here. I remember the first time I was here, it was an eye opener. I've been to other alligator farms, even other zoos. But just, I mean, you look around, you see the flowers, the trees, the birds up there. Sure. Yeah, behind us are all these wading birds. So we have this natural swamp. There's a couple hundred alligators out here. And it turns out that birds, these wading birds, follow alligators to build a nest. Because as long as their nest is hanging out over an alligator, uh, there's no raccoons or possums or rats or snakes that can climb up the tree and eat their eggs or eat them for that matter. And so it's a natural thing in the wild. Alligators tend to follow the nesting birds and nesting birds tend to follow the alligators. So why are the alligators interested? Because birds eventually fall out of the trees, right? So they get a snack every now and again, but it keeps the population whole. It is the circle of life <laughs> happening right here in front of your eyes. So this is like a real ecosystem. It's not just something that's like man-made and you guys splash it here. You guys are actually fostering an ecosystem that helps the alligator or crocodilians, excuse yeah, me, sure. and the birds and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's quite a mix out here. There are all sorts of native birds that fly in and out. We have a special photographer's pass to let the photographers in, you know, an hour early so they get a little bit better light. And and uh, some of those guys, they're making a living off of photos of birds from this place because they can do <laughs> postcards and, and uh, calendars and all kinds of cool things. And you can't get this close to waiting birds anywhere else without spooking the birds. Here, you can kind of walk up. You can only, you can touch a nest if you if we let you. You could be that close. Uh, you can get that close, but the birds know they're people here. They just kind of expect that. Now, other than birds, because in a moment we're going to walk around and just sure. really explore the zoo. What else should we check out? 
this place has a lot to offer. So we've got this cool award-winning snack bar in the center of the park. It's it's won the best ethnic food in St. Augustine for two years in a row. Uh, we have a great gift shop, which you kind of have to exit to get out of the park. So we, we've kind of got you there. And then uh, <laughs> as part of our park, we have this new concept where you can zip line over the zoo. And that's a great way to see the animals because you get this bird's eye perspective and uh, gonna get your heart racing. If you need an adrenaline rush, that's the thing to do. Next year will be our 125th anniversary. So we're, uh, if you exclude the glass bottom boats in, in uh, Silver Springs, we're the oldest attraction left in Florida. And uh, we've been expanding all that time. So in addition to seeing alligators and crocodiles, we have Komodo dragons which are pretty cool. We have a big king cobra that's over 12 feet long. Uh, we have one of the most dangerous birds on the planet. It's a flightless bird called a cassowary. And honestly, I think the most dangerous bird on the pro animal on the property. I'd rather catch 12 crocodiles and mess with this big bird. I like your style, Rance. Let's go check out some of these See, fierce creatures. Why do you guys have me right here by the gate? I'm the first one. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> oh, I'm out. <laughs> and on that note, we're off. Thank you, John. I don't know if we can top this, <laughs> but let's try. Let's Ready go. Check out some more animals. Let's do this. One of the biggest attractions here, not just by size, but by popularity, Maximo. Yep. Let's go meet him. Size does matter. All right, Maximo, the sign doesn't do justice to just how big he is. Now look up here, you'll see an average size croc. Look at the size difference. A thousand pounds difference in weight. Jacksonville, Sawgrass, Ponte Vedra, St. Augustine. This is the place to be for golf. We are in the World Golf Hall of Fame. And right now we're with Dr. Tony Parker to give us an overview of what this place is all about. Thanks for having us. I'm walking around, I'm looking. This place is amazing. How big is it? It's 35,000 square feet of exhibition space celebrating 155 members of individuals who have made the game great. Not just competitors, male and female, but golf course architects, writers, broadcasters. They're all here. And just walking around, it just seems like you could spend an entire day, maybe even two here. It's so big. Well, actually, our admission fee is well, for two days. So come and go as you please. And it takes all that time. And it's so amazing. Like, we can see the buzz or, or the images of the people that have contributed to golf. How important is it that people get to know what the golf has been to this community? Well, I'll tell you, when you come in, you see the entire history of the game and you identify those key individuals who've made it what it is, and that draws people into to play. And then, of course, a lot we have here is very interactive, so uh, uh, our visitors and our guests can take part of the game as well. Tony, what do you recommend we start? Well, I'll tell you what, let's start with the player's experience. Since we are talking about Ponte Vedra in this area, uh, the Players' Championship is the place to go. Let's, so let's go that way. Now, Tony, this is a favorite of a lot of guests that come through. It is indeed. Perspective of pressure. Yes, this is the 17th hole at TPC Sawgrass, and a lot of people don't get the opportunity to play it, but we do here. So we stand on, or actually I'll let you stand, and you'll get the experience of what it really feels like, the pressure of the 17th hole at TPC Sawgrass. Now, you look at it, there it is without the water. So it just looks like a, a very easy little par three, 137 yards. But then you're gonna see they're gonna add water, and then we're gonna add the fans, and then you're gonna hear the heartbeat of the pressure as you watch the players come to the tee box. 
to hit their shots. I like it. So this is just one of many hands-on things that you guys have here. Throughout the museum, we've got a lot of interactive things. We have a putting green just around the corner. Let's do that. Let's try the putting. Let's I took it. golf in college. I'm good. <laughs> so there are multiple putting greens inside the World Golf. And all of them are challenged. Now, we've recreated a putt here from the 1996 President's Cup that Freddie Couples sunk. We've recreated the speed and the break of that putt. So you guys are up for a challenge? I think so. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's go. All right. Good pace. Good pace. Oh! Too much pace. And it is... Oh! Dr. Parker. Nice shot. Center cut. He's a Ooh. professional. That's why they call you the doctor. That's it. <laughs> All right, what's our next stop? Let's go around to the locker room. Let's do Let's it. Let's see what they've got there. All right. So, Tony, here we are, the member locker room. And this really is a fan favorite because it it's really a, a personal touch with the players, right? It is. It's a void of discovery. All the members get to place in their lockers those things that reflect their personality. So you'll see everything from a samurai sword to a Lego tractor to a cricket bat to ping pong paddle. There you go. And I love it because it just captures, again, the essence of what the players were all about. A little slice, even though we don't want to use a slice when we're talking about golfing, but a little slice into their lives. Speaking well, of slice, we've got another challenge coming up. <gasps> challenge all outside. Chance to hit to the 17th of Sawgrass. Swimming. Tony, now this is the real fan favorite. We are outside, and with the price of admission, you get the opportunity to actually hit a golf ball. You sure do. This is part of the admission. You play this hole, a chance to do the 17th at Sawgrass, and our 18-hole putting course as well. I'm ready, Mark. I'm Not so, so much. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> there it is. That's the one you put on tennis. Nailed it. <laughs> I don't feel bad at all. That's money. That is why they call him the doctor. Well, I thought I was doing well. I mean, me and Mark, we are novices, but of course. Yeah, I went over and then I went under. But Tony, you were actually on it. I went on. <laughs> I'm looking for the cash. <laughs> I kind of made this clear. That's not happening. We weren't doing this. We saw your skills. But this was such a great time. Just a great opportunity to go out here for all golf fans. Really and you learned so much. From, from very young age right up to the old as you can get. Well, there's still so much more to do. So thank you so much. And I think it's time just to maybe just do one more lap around and mm -hmm. learn some more stuff. Can we get a golf cart? Welcome back to the River City Live road trip. We had so much fun today. Julie, thank you for opening up your doors, showing us around. I felt like we were on a mini vacation. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have such a beautiful home base as well. So if folks want to find more information about Dream Finders Homes, I know your website is easy to remember, right? Isn't it just dreamfindershomes.com? Absolutely, come and check us out. We're here every day of the week and we'd love to give you a tour. And just think if you lived here, how easily you could get to those the Red Boat Tours and to the St. Augustine Seafood Company. There are so many things to do in this area. And then because we're close to 95, it's just a very quick trip into Jacksonville if you work there. What, I mean, you want to go hit some links at that World Golf Village Hall of Fame, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. And we're about, what, five minutes five walking minutes, distance from absolutely. there. Absolutely. I love it. Very nice. Thanks once more for having us out here. Anytime. Thank you. If you missed anything, visit us at RiverCityLiveTV.com. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.